Welcome to Douglas County News Exchange. I'm your host, Lena Hardy. The school year is over, but the security of our students in Douglas County is still a topic of discussion. With the Douglas County school system being the forefront for school safety, security, and technology, Governor Brian Kemp made a visit to Chapel Hill High School to participate in a real-life demonstration of a teacher-initiated classroom lockdown. By implementing this new system, Douglas County Schools will now be able to achieve campus-wide protection for all 35 campuses by the beginning of next school year. Here's a video of Governor Kemp's remarks made to local politicians, school system administrators, and the media outlets in the library of Chapel Hill High School. Well, this is very uh, exciting for us and for me to see this firsthand, to see how the school has implemented school security measures on campus. Uh, really based on the needs of their students, their faculty, and this local community, which I personally think is the way that we should do this. Um, it should be decided by the locals. You all know best uh, how to keep your school safe, and uh, we're glad to be able to partner in doing that without having some state mandate that you don't really need to figure this out. Uh, I'm certainly committed to strengthening our classrooms and offering the best learning environments that we can for students in every region of our state. We have taken school security and school safety head on. We did it early. This money was passed in the amended budget, so it's been in, in the works now for months. And I'm excited to be able to visit today and, and uh, go to Mrs. Uh, Andreas's Hamilton's classroom, who's now in her third year of teaching. And let's see how this, you know, system's working. And uh, I think it'll be a great learning experience for us. But I think it also lets Georgians know and Georgia parents know that, you know, we are moving the needle here in our state on school security and school safety. And we trust our locals to do the right thing with the funding that we've created. And I'm very confident that Superintendent North and, and the other folks involved, the board members and the community, the parents and the students and the local law enforcement will put that to good use. Speaking of our students, Brighton Academy's third grade students created commercials as one of their class assignments before leaving for the summer break. Take a look. Did you know every day two, two million tons of garbage are dumped into Earth's water, enough to fill 15,000 boxcars, but more and more waste from industry, agriculture, and homes are getting into our water. We, we must act now. Otherwise, we will end up with no clean water. It will be all polluted and we will get sick from it. We can organize a beach cleanup or we can help UNICEF by donating money. This affects us by making less fresh water available and by causing sickness from unsafe water. Every day, two millions of tons of garbage is dumped into Earth's water. Nearly 80% of all sicknesses in the world are caused by unsafe water. We need to act now to team up with organizations like UNICEF to, and to bring filtering systems to places that don't have enough water. How much pollution do you think is in the water? Millions of people can just turn on the faucet and get water. Water pollution is affecting millions of people. People are getting sick by unsafe drinking water. Water is becoming polluted by cars that are letting out gas that makes the water unsafe. Also, people are not picking up trash. You can help by picking up trash and making it a game to the find the most trash wins. We can also help by reducing the amount of pollution that gets into our water. Hey, stop polluting, stop polluting. It is bad for you and me. We need our planet to be clean and free from pollution. Nearly 80% of world sickness is caused by unsafe drinking water. More water is becoming polluted every day. When you throw away a plastic bottle, it pollutes our earth. More and more water waste from industry and agriculture and homes are getting into the water. As more water becomes polluted, there is less clean water available. I can go to the park and pick up trash and put it in the trash can. I can go to the dog park and pick up trash. I can go to my neighbor's house and clean the trash in their backyard. Don't, Don't just stand around, go pick some garbage off the ground. Hi, me and my friends 
came to talk about access to water. Did you know that people have to walk miles every day just to get to water? In North America, an average person drinks 55 buckets of water. In Ethiopia, an average person drinks one bucket of water. Please go to www.charitywater.org to find new ways and donate or even have a fundraiser, fundraiser to give them money, food, and water. You can help this issue by saving water. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye. 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 The 2019 Great Douglas County Shredding event was a massive hit this year, with over 350 cars going through the lanes at the Douglas County Courthouse. The event started at 9 in the morning and the line stretched to Hospital Drive in the first hour with heavy traffic. The Communications Department would like to thank you, the citizens of Douglas County, for such a great turnout and thank A1 Shredding for being a part of this event. This is an annual event, so be sure to visit us again next year. Ten years ago, 74% of citizens completed the census, but the leadership of Douglas County, Douglasville, and Villarica are preparing now to ensure that that number increases for the 2020 census. In May, there was a meeting held in the Douglas County Courthouse with the three local governments to learn and understand the importance of the census and how to get citizens involved. Check out this brief video from that meeting. Thank you all for being here today. Welcome to the Douglas County Census 2020 kickoff event. My name is Ron Roberts. I'm the Planning and Zoning Manager for Douglas County. The inclusion of a recurring census in the Constitution marked the first time that a nation, any nation, had made an enumeration the basis of a representative government, something as Americans we should be very proud of. In essence, the census connects the American people to the government like no other country. The census provides a snapshot of the nation at 10-year intervals and it illustrates where we are as Americans at any given time. And that is why a complete count committee is so important to this county and why we need trusted sources in the community to help with this task for the complete count committee. This kickoff event, in part, is a way for staff and elected officials to reach out to the community to ask for their help with the complete count committee activities countywide. 90% of the hard to reach populations in the census are located within five miles of the library. Who are the hard to count? Limited English proficiency, renters, homeless, children under five, gated communities, migrant workers, seniors. These are just some of the groups that historically have been very difficult to count. One of the hard to reach areas are people who don't have internet access. So we put this little presentation together to show and um, we give you the total amount of people. It's 3.2% of the population in this census tract. Uh, 400 don't have access to internet. This is a um, estimate. We'll put this up on the, our website so um, people can share it. Um, and we'll put it up on our social media. So we've got three main goals, and they are pretty much the same goals as the Census Bureau. We're not going to re rewrite the plan because it's important that we all have a consistent message. So you'll see three things here. <clears throat> we want to increase the awareness about how the census data is used and how the census data will influence people's everyday lives. Now, anyone that's ever done any type of public engagement or public outreach, you understand the importance of making sure that people understand how it's going to affect them. It's going to have to be very personal. And we're going to have to say, hey, this, if the census determines that restaurant that you want to come to Douglas County, the census is going to look and say, hey, who makes what? Who lives where? So we're going to make sure that people truly understand how it will affect them. <coughs> the second thing is we've got to make sure that people trust the Census Bureau and make sure that they understand that the information that will be collected will be confidential. And then the third thing is we just want to educate the people on the options for responding to the census. So the different ways, online, by phone, by mail, all your different options. Today's kickoff for the 2020 census is just the beginning of much more work to do. And I am encouraged again, and I'm sure we will have a very robust count. Together we are making a concerted, a concerted uh, collaborative effort to ensure that our count is accurate during this time. And we're fortunate to have such strong team members. Uh, I have a personal goal in mind, but I will not uh, release that goal because everything I do, I'm an overachiever. There's no room for second place in Douglas County. And we already know those are the special words of Vince Lombardi. So at the end of the day, I know it's gonna be all good. So thank you. <laughs> 
The flowers are blooming and the county was booming with visitors and citizens ready to celebrate the 12th annual Penny McHenry Hydrangea Festival. There were several family events and activities, including a flower show and art competition throughout the first weekend of June at the festival's new location, Douglas County High School. Did you know our very own West Pines Golf Club was named one of the top 10 courses in Greater Atlanta? That's a huge accomplishment for the golf club located off of Highway 5, and DC TV 23 sends its congratulations. For membership information or to book your next tea time, visit www.westpinesgc.com. If you love music in the downtown Douglasville area, mark your calendars for Wednesday Wind Down starting this month and continuing until August 14th. A list of musical acts can be found on the city's website at www.douglasvillega.gov. Also, be sure to save the date for September Saturday's festival at the Douglas County Courthouse on September 21st and September 28th. It's one of the largest county festivals of the year, and we hope to see you there. That's our show for this month. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out all of our programming on DCTV 23. You can find us on Comcast Channel 23, AT&T U-verse Channel 99, and online at dctv23.com. We end our show with a monthly birthday celebration for seniors at Woody Fight Senior Center. See you next time. Good morning to everybody. I'm so glad you are here as we celebrate the, the May birthdays, okay. Um, I know we have some folks here, a lot of folks here with birthdays and a lot of people that came with them, friends or spouses or whatever. So welcome, welcome to the Woody Fight May birthday party. And I'm gonna let Dion say a few words. Good morning everyone, how are y'all? On behalf of the Board of Commissioner's Office and Chairman Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones, we would like to wish everyone a happy, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, here we go, folks. Okay. Oh, we got trumpet sounds now. That's good. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go, and I'm going to find out who we've got here today. My name is Lynette Hurd. I am, um, my birthday is May 7th, which is coming up on Tuesday. I'll be 69 years old, and I am from Plainfield, New Jersey. Okay, New Jersey. We have a lot of folks hey. from New Jersey mm -hmm. and New York. Okay, let's find out who, who this is. Right, you didn't have a bag. <laughs> my name is Clyde Farmer, and I was born in Butler, Georgia, which is Taylor County. And I am 78, I will be 78 years old on Monday. Mm, Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And you were born in Butler, Georgia? Butler, Georgia, yes. Yeah. Okay, very good. We're going to move on over here. Mm -hmm. I'll come back over there. I'm Rosamond Ando from Ghana. I was born in Ghana, and tomorrow will be my birthday. I'll be 70 years. My daughter here in Douglasville, and I'm living with her. Very good. So we finally got it. We right off the bat, almost we got mm -hmm. our international person. So <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> okay, here we go. Hi, I'm Barbara Williams. I'll be 74 on Monday, and I'm originally from Boston, Massachusetts. I think we would have figured that one out, honey, <laughs> because of the accent. Right, so. All right. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Louise Biggers, and my birthday is 15th May. I'll be 70 years old, and I was born in Amelia, Virginia. Okay, nice. Virginia. We haven't had too many people from Virginia. Mm -hmm. All right, and who is this? My name is Colin Guthrie. I was born in Jamaica, and my birthday is May 5th. How old? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, now you know. You couldn't, you couldn't figure it out. <laughs> if you don't want to, you don't have to. Uh, I'm going to be 58. <laughs> okay, you're a young one in here. Huh? <laughs> okay. We're going to run back over here. Okay. Get right. this lady right here. Frederica Smithson. They call me Keel Smithson, actually. Um, I was born 
May 11th, 1938. Okay. Right, right. <laughs> Where were you born? St. Louis, Missouri. Okay, Missouri. Yes. Midwest <laughs> folks here. My name is Judy Runyon. I was born May the 8th, 1951 in Cedartown, Georgia. You can tell the way I talk, I'm a Southern person. <laughs> okay. And, and this next Wednesday, I'll be 68 years old. All right, very good. Okay. This lady right here, I was talking to before the party started, and um, quite something else. So we want to know about her. <laughs> What's your name? Ruth Renfro. I was born at Georgia Baptist Hospital 93 years ago today. Wow. How about that? And today is her birthday, and she came to share it with all of y'all. She told me beforehand, she did voluntarily give up her car keys, okay? <laughs> A lot of us need to think about that, okay? <laughs> but I'm going to tell y'all something. I was not only thinking about Ruth Renfro, I was thinking about some of y'all. <laughs> Had I... I don't have much mind, I tell you, that's the only thing when you lose your mind. And I said, I volunteer, laid my keys down so my children wouldn't worry about me and I wouldn't hurt or kill somebody else. I'd never get over that. I am a Christian. I wouldn't give up on that. Oh, and we thank you for that. <laughs> she also told me she's out in the yard cutting stuff down and hauling it away. So that's pretty good for 93. We're proud of that. Okay, let's go right here. My my name is Marlene Pierre. I am living in Douglasville. I'm, I'm coming here. I'm Where were you born? Haiti. Haiti. Okay. Haiti. I'm 70 years old. 75 years old. All right, very good. Very, very good. We're going to move over here. Okay. And right. your name, sir? My name is Willie Barfield. I was born May 16, 1942. I am now, seven, I'll be 77 years old, the 16th of this month. And where were you born? I was born in Jackson County, Georgia. Okay. Wow. We've got a few mm -hmm. Georgia people here. <laughs> And I love his shirt. It says retired under new management. <laughs> <laughs> so that, yes. that's pretty good, huh? Okay. Oh, my name is Oscar Moore. I was born May 4th, 1948. I'll be 71 tomorrow. I was from Sumter, South Carolina. Oh, good. We got somebody from <laughs> South I'm a South Carolina girl, too. So, yeah. So we got somebody there. Very good. All right, sir. And your name? Augustino Patty, P A T T I Patty. Okay, and where were you born? I was born in St. Louis, Missouri. Okay, we have one other St. Louis person over here, I believe. Okay, and how old are you? I'm gonna be 68 years old on Wednesday. On oh, Wednesday, well, happy mm -hmm. birthday. Thank mm -hmm. you. All right, and your name? My name is Dorothy Colvin, and I was born in Greene County, Alabama and I'll be 66 on Mother's Day, May 12th. Very good, thank you, thank you. Okay, Medea. My name is Ann Robinson, and I was born on May 11th, and I'll be 74 years old then, wow. and I was born in Maryland. Maryland, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, dear. Hello. Hey, mm -hmm. I'm Allie Phillips. I was born in Bessemer City, North Carolina. North Carolina, that's, that's close enough to South Carolina. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and I will be 87. Wow. Very good, nice. very good. I do all my yard work too, cut my grass and everything. Wow. Well, good. I'm gonna get the two of y'all together to come to my house, okay? <laughs> I need a whole lot of stuff done at my house. I need a whole lot of stuff done at mine, too. Okay. <laughs> I can't find my volunteers. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's see. 
My name is Brenda Ritchie, and I was born in Atlanta, Georgia. My birthday is May 19th, and I will be 78. Very good. Okay, and this, this little lady here that's already given me hugs. So. My name is Ernestine Allen. On May the 10th, I'll be 77 years old. Okay, and where were you born? I was born in Shreveport, Louisiana. Okay. And I lived in Detroit for most of my life. And I've been here for about 11 years. Okay, well, welcome to Douglasville. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> my name is Elsie Wells. I was born in New York City. My birthday is tomorrow, May 4th. And um, how old are you going to be? 88. 88. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. And I do believe we had somebody sneak in over uh -huh. here. He does this to me all the time, y'all. So. Okay, need your name. My name is Elroy King. Originally, I'm from Guyana, South America. I now live in Villa Rica. Okay. From where in South America? Guyana. Guyana. Okay, very good. And how old are you, Elroy? I'll be 74 in, on the 16th. On the 16th, very good. He is a very good pickleball player, too, so. Okay? If I can hold him down, sometimes he gets a little wound up over there. So. Did I miss anybody? Okay. Very good. Okay, we got to sing, y'all. You can't have a birthday unless you sing. So everybody help me out. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.